Dr. Trisha K. Haldani Watson and Joe Parker. Now tell me what what's going on here. What you anything you can say to describe or clarify or? Well, I think this is really uh, sort of the evolution of something that started a number of years ago for the people of Molokai, which was to just raise awareness about the activities, agriculture activities that Monsanto and other organizations that support gen genetic engineering um, have on their island. And I think it's just really interesting that we have seen entities that support genetic engineering and do genetic engineering agriculture expand more and more and more, and yet there just hasn't been the level of transparency that I think people need in order to feel comfortable with what they're putting in their bodies. So, Haloa was created on the island of Molokai a number of years ago um, when there was genetic engineering, a researcher on genetically modifying taro and different varieties of taro. So we were successful in stopping those research activities with the University of Hawaii and I think at this time um, the community is looking to pass legislation that would require companies that created food products with genetically engineered ingredients to label them as such. And it's simply a matter of making sure people know what they're putting in their bodies. Um, you know, we have labeling for pretty much everything else if you have wheat product in something, they tell right. you about that. Um, if you have any sort of chemicals, they tell you about that. And that's really just a health issue. And I think many of us see this as being a very serious health issue, that people have a right to know not only what they're putting in their own bodies, but what they're feeding their families. So this is really an effort to raise more awareness about that legislation in hopes that we have something passed this legislative session. Now I have, I have a question to ask everyone, and that is that National surveys, local surveys, all show an overwhelming support for the labeling of GMOs because people want to know what they eat. Uh, but there's no legislation. Now, what, what explains that? I think um, the companies that support genetic engineering have been very successful in their lobbying efforts. Um, they show up in force at the legislature in, in whatever state, federal, whatever level in Hawaii they do. and. And I think there really, in all fairness, has not been the same level of response or activities from people who would like to see this labeling happening. So while the public may say that, the public doesn't necessarily show up at the legislature to make well, their voices heard. The lobbyists are at work inside here, and the people are at work out here. Right. So, so they have a lot of money, and they have a lot of lobbyists. Now, what do you think uh, will get people out? Knowledge about what's going on and the fact that Hawaii is, is ground zero for a lot of seed corn experimentation and there's a lot of undocumented, how much acreage is going on in this state in terms of seed corn experimenting in different GMO varieties and the problem with Roundup Ready crops is that they spray all these chemicals and there's no ground cover. So you have bare earth, dirt. When the winds blow and uh, it rains, you have major runoff. And that ends up on our reefs and in our ocean and what it does to the fish. In the streams, know. I guess in the water table too, if yeah. you're using an RT. Yeah, I mean, you don't know. You don't know. But, but so there's, there's a lot of practices that are going on in terms of the farming and how that impacts the people surrounding you know, those fields. Now, if people want to know more, where, what, what should they do? Is there, are there internet... Uh, well, there's a great documentary called The World According to Monsanto. I just saw that they for the second that? time. Oh, a man. French woman documentary. Right. And, and it's, I, I thought it was cut up into parts. I think you can watch the whole thing, but I know on YouTube they right. conveniently cut it up into like 15-minute segments. Now that uh, documentary, I understand uh, Monsanto um, was able to enforce an injunction against its broadcast in the U.S. Really? Right, which was, not, was never broadcast in the U.S., but it was broadcast in Canada and in Europe. Wow. I'm not surprised, yeah. but I, that shocks me. Well, they, and, and they wouldn't want it to be shown because that, that movie was very calm and methodical, and they just told the truth. 
And that truth was completely frightening in terms of, you know, seeing a, a you know, a misbehaving corporate citizen, I guess you And could the movie say. he's talking about is The World According to Monsanto, a documentary definitely worth watching, yeah. definitely very educational. Yeah, because that's, that's who's doing business. Those are the type of people doing business in this state, and they say to trust us. <laughs> but then when you watch a movie like that, you know that right. they're hard to trust. Because they're a chemical company who now is in the agriculture business. But right. Great. Well, thank you much. Yeah, I know yeah, you're yeah. busy. Thank you very much.